Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Tune In Tuesday. As we're all spending more time at home, it's important that we learn to appreciate everything that's around us in our very local environment. So I thought what better time to begin exploring deeper into Cornish marine wildlife. Many of our childhood memories perfectly encapsulate the magic of Cornish wildlife, with countless hours exploring the rock pools and the rugged and dramatic coastline in the southwest. But any picture that we paint in our minds of what lies beneath the surface of the waves would not be complete without one of our most well-loved and well-recognised species, the dolphin. 28 different species of whales, dolphins and porpoises, collectively known as cetaceans, have been recorded along the UK coastline, half of which have been recorded down here in the southwest. But there's one curious character that I'd like to focus this video on. You could say it's one of the more common species. This is of course the common dolphin, but before I hone in on this specific species, I'd like to dive into more general dolphin anatomy. So I very helpfully have this diagram with me which I got on my Marine Mammal Observer course with Marine Life, whom I'm now an ambassador for. Now if you'd like to know any more about any cetaceans, then check out their website as there is heaps of information on the Marine Life website. So, cetacean anatomy. Now I'm aware that many of you will be familiar with a lot of what I'm about to say, so this is just gonna be a brief whistle-stop tour of some of the key features. Now of course, the first that we need to talk about is the blowhole. But there's a common misconception out there that these animals actually squirt water out of their blowholes. This is due to films like Finding Nemo that show Marlin and Dory being squirted out of the whale's blowhole. But this isn't actually quite true. The blowhole is a hole on top of the animal's head, but there is a flap in there which can be opened and closed due to muscle contractions which are done voluntarily by the animal. Now this flap creates a watertight seal because this passage actually leads to the animal's lungs. And like all mammals, cetaceans breathe air like we do. So if this passage filled with water every time the animal left the surface, it would result in them drowning. Now it might seem confusing that no water actually gets into the passage because many of us would have seen either in documentaries or with our own eyes cetaceans coming to the surface and blowing this huge spout of water into the air but all this is that we're seeing is just excess water that's been deposited on top of the flap which is cleared during exhalation and the condensation of water vapor that's in the animal's breath a bit like when we're breathing and what comes out of our mouths on a cold winter's day. So looking back at the general anatomy of the animals now, we have the beak, which is the mouth, the eyes, which are adapted to see in and out of water, and then we have the fins. So the pectoral fins, which are the fins on the side, these are used for steering. We then have the dorsal fin, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, and this is used for stabilisation, a bit like a keel on a boat. And then we have the tail or the fluke, and this is what's used for power and propulsion through the water. A final notable feature of the cetaceans is the melon. Now this is the fatty forehead of the animal and it's from here that sounds used for communication or echolocation are projected from the animal. So let's focus back on one of my favourite species now, the common dolphin, which is actually the dolphin that you see in this diagram here. Adult common dolphins, also known as the short-beaked common dolphin, can live up to 35 years and reach lengths up to 2.5 metres. Generally, they're spotted in groups of 1 to 500 individuals, but have been recorded in superpods, huge groups of thousands of individuals. These dolphins are a highly active species and very fast swimmers. They've been recorded swimming up to 30 miles per hour and are capable of impressive acrobatics. They are very easily distinguished from other species due to their distinct figure of eight pattern or hourglass pattern on their flank with that unique yellow pattern clearly standing out. 
In fact, common dolphins are the only dolphin species that have three different colours on their body. Now, although the IUCN Red List of Endangered Species lists common dolphins as least concern, it does not mean that populations of these animals are under threat all over the world. Impacts like overfishing causing depletion of crucial food resources, entanglement in ghost gear and bycatch are impacting these animals every single year. It's estimated that in the Straits of Gibraltar alone, up to 15,000 individuals are caught and killed annually due to bycatch. And according to data from the Marine Strandings Network, last year marked a seven year high of strandings in the UK of whales, dolphins and porpoises, particularly due to an increase of common dolphin strandings in Cornwall. This research also showed that 23% of deaths in the UK of common dolphins are linked to bycatch. But perhaps the most important point of this entire video is that there are loads of things that we can do to help conserve this characteristic species. If you're out at sea and are lucky enough to see a pod of common dolphins, then please ensure that you're keeping your distance. At least 100 metres, especially if mothers and calves are present. If the animals approach you, then allow them to interact with you on their own terms and allow them to leave without following them. If you find an animal dead or alive stranded on the beach, then be sure to call Cornwall Wildlife Trust's Marine Strandings Network. I've put the number on the screen for you now, so why not pause the video and save it to your phone? Of course, you can support a whole range of marine conservation charities like Marine Life, Cornwall Wildlife Trust, Cornwall Seal Research Trust, and British Divers Marine Life Rescue. Or if you're interested in some more hands-on, in-the-field conservation, then why not join us on one of our plastic trawl wildlife cruises out of Falmouth Bay with Captain Keith on AK Wildlife Cruises. This will give you an opportunity to find out some real hard data of what pollutants are out there sharing the same waters as the wonderful wildlife that we're lucky to have off our coastline. And as a special gift to those of you that have stayed with me to the end of this video, if you like, share or comment on this video, we will enter you into a draw to win yourself a free place on board one of our cruises. Now, of course, we're not running them at the moment, but if you like, share or comment on this video, we'll be sure to com contact you when we're up and running again. So thank you so much for watching this week's Tune In Tuesday and I'll see you next week for next week's episode.